Hello and welcome to Good Company with me, Sheila Rogers. I have the great honour of being the Chancellor of the University of Victoria. And I have some great company for our time together today. And that is someone who is many things. He is a master carver, an artist. He is the O'Dane Professor, and I just have to get this right, uh, of Contemporary Art Practice of the Pacific Northwest with the Department of Visual Arts at the University of Victoria. But he is also my friend, and that is Carrie Newman. And Carrie, it's so great to see you, and I'm, I'm sending you a hug. I've, I have, this is my first visual virtual hug. <laughs> really nice to see you. You know, nice just seeing see the opening footage, I just got really nostalgic for the University of Victoria. How long has it been since you've been on campus? Officially on campus, it's been since it's been <laughs> seven or eight weeks. But yeah. I, um, yeah. I too get nostalgic, and I've, one of the things I've been able to do uh, a fair bit is go for bike rides uh, lately. And oh, one nice. of the places that Addie and I really like to go for a bike ride <clears throat> is on campus because there's all those wonderful pathways, and uh, she just has a lot of fun riding around there. And then when I go for exercise, I just, if it's late at night, I zip around the ring. Very good thing. So I go, to do. I go back and, uh, often, yeah. not in the way that I would like to be there. I was going to ask you how you've been uh, negotiating this time. And uh, I should say, I'm going to guess one of the things that's good about it is you're actually getting to spend more time with Miss Addie, who is your nine-year-old daughter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, getting to spend time with family, uh, getting a chance to slow down um, and remember, you know, why we do all the things we do is, is one of the really, the real positives here. Cause you know, you get busy with your work um, and thinking about the importance of uh, of it, and then you start making choices to based on how important you think the the work you're doing is, um, and maybe you start to slip away, even though you might feel like you're holding on to work life balance, slip away from um, from remembering why you started doing it in the first place. So for me, it's it's Addie. For me, it's my my family. Yeah. Um, I've been finding time is a really strange concept because the days seem to go by very, very quickly. And at the same time, uh, I've described it as sort of walking through jello. It feels, um, I don't know, I can't quite get my, my head around what time is at the moment because it's not marked in the same way. Yeah, I, I have the, the same the same feeling. I mean, like I, you get up and you have to kind of try to remember what day it is because you don't have those same markers of yeah. like, oh, Tuesdays I go and teach this class or Thursdays we take Adi to skipping. So you don't have those same markers to like of the conventional schedule. And so you end up waking up and not knowing if it's Tuesday or Friday um, a little bit. And, and, that extends also to just like, what time of day is it? <laughs> I don't always have to get up and be somewhere at a certain time. And subsequently mm -hmm. I end up working or hanging out late into the night and then um, having to struggle to get back onto a regular schedule. There's things I've I've never thought about, um, you know, as a as a radio journalist. I'm this is my studio, and it's uh, the first time it's made an appearance, uh, except in a still photograph. So you know, here it is. Here's where the magic happens. But I realized I was doing a Zoom call just over there uh, on my treadmill desk, and. Um, Someone called me up afterwards and said, I didn't realize you were a fan of Miller Genuine Draft. And Charlie, maybe you could just bring that book over. Um, it's, uh, you have to be sort of careful what's in the shot. <laughs> and this is probably something as a visual artist that you knew. But this book, this box, I was so shocked that someone thought I, I would leave a, a shot of uh, Miller Genuine Draft 
in in the picture. Yeah, here it is. Uh, but inside it is all sorts of books that um, Richard Wagamese left for me, like mm -hmm. Braiding Sweetgrass, uh, books by Marilyn Robinson. Oh, yeah, and the final report from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So really, it probably couldn't be farther from a box of Miller Genuine Draft. But the, the things you have to think about when you're visual, right? It's yes. like you have to curate it's, your it's, life. I, I was going to say, it's like we have now we have to curate and be the directors of our existence because everything yeah. that's behind us becomes what people know of of our homes and our lives and whether it's a meeting or whether it's a visit with friends um this you bring people into your space differently right yeah what is behind you by the way um i have a couple of pieces of artwork by by friends of mine um i have one by francis dick which is um, this one over here and the one directly behind me is by Moy Sutherland. Hmm. Well, thank you for letting us into your home space. And I think one of the things that um, I, I want to do is while we've been off, uh, you've won an award, which is a, a really lovely award from, um, from the Victoria Community Leadership people. And your award was for extending reconciliation. And uh, so, first of all, congratulations for that. I saw that on your Facebook uh, feed. And um, I, I know that that is a, an award that, that means a lot to you. How, were you able to mark it in some way? Um, a little bit in, in that I could share it, you know, um, on social media. But then I was able to have... Uh, a conversation um, with Mark Crocker from Leadership Victoria. We talked a little bit about it that they posted on their site. And I know that they're looking for a way to to mark the occasion for everybody. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different people who've won um, community leadership awards through that program. And, and so we all kind of get to check in with each other by seeing the videos that are being put out. But we haven't got to get together and shake hands, or share hugs, and mm -hmm. congratulate each other in person. So I'm looking forward to to that opportunity whenever it comes. I've known you since uh, I think it was the Vancouver uh, national event of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and I I'm wondering if over the last, and that was 2013, uh, seven or so years, your uh, definition, your, your feeling uh, for reconciliation has changed. Oh man, <laughs> I think that when, when we met, that was at the very, very beginning of my education into knowing and understanding what reconciliation means. Um, I was I was new to it. I thought that I would be contributing to it through the making of this artwork and bringing together of people. However, the the more you begin to learn, so uh, it changes your perception and understanding of of what the word means. And so, you know, like reconciliation is partly about bringing together people. And it is about recognizing and acknowledging difference. But I think what I learned more than anything was that it's about structural change. And it's about, um, it's about fully understanding the truth, um, the shared history of this country, the, and, and knowing that colonialism is present today and it, it persists in so many different ways. And, and that's part of the work that, that I try to take on at the university and through, through my artistic practice. Uh, but I have this saying, or this sort of come to this realization lately, and it's that um, when you make artwork about changing things, about 
social issues. You become the maker and the material. And so I've been sort of considering mm -hmm. these last six years or seven years. Actually, you could extend that back to 2008 when I did a project called the Spirit Pole. Um, right. And you become the maker and the material. And I've been remade by the process of making these artworks because I've learned so much along the way that it shapes me. When we've talked about this before, and, and I guess maybe as recently as March, I think that was the last time I saw you at the Victoria Urban Reconciliation Dialogue. Um, you, this wasn't on stage, as so much of our friendship is, but you, you talked about uh, how reconciliation is also reconciliation with the land, with, uh, with Mother Earth, and, and that's, that's something that um, maybe we've had some time to think about over this time. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I read today that the carbon footprint has been reduced by 17% um, during during this time. And you sort of hear the anecdotes about uh, nature taking back certain spaces. Um, and but you start to think about what's important, right? Um, and, and I think that that something that I work for, I mean, there was an image that showed earlier of the earth drums. Um, something that I think about when I talk about structural change and reconciliation is changing our collective relationship with the land um, and finding ways for people to consider themselves differently in the places that they occupy, in what they consume, uh, and how they make decisions. Because we so often as a, as a society make decisions based on the economy um, and, and not, take into, not taking into consideration the ways in which, if we just solely focus on that, we're taking away from future generations. We're taking away from the health of, of the land. Um, and, and those, that's vital, right? That's, that's at the core of, of human life of, and, and for, for me, it's at the core of reconciliation. So you probably heard the phrase land back. Um, mm -hmm. and for me, that means changing the way we interact with the land. Um, obviously it means giving or accepting the sovereignty of First Nations um, and and accepting the the power and control over resource that comes with that. But I think it also includes changing the way we look at it. Instead of thinking about land as resource, we have to look at it as something that we are the stewards of, that we have responsibility for. And so that's kind of the very inside bit of what I think of when I think of um, of reconciliation. Um, we have someone, we have a man behind the curtains here, and I'm going to ask Mike if it's possible to put up the picture again of the earth drums. And uh, because, Carrie, when you've talked to me about them before, you've talked about how the reverberations, thank you very much, Mike, of these drums uh, actually go into the earth and there's there's such a connection there. Yeah, well, when you look at this photograph, um, you can see that the people are standing on the earth, right? Um, <clears throat> so there's no, I mean, there's a little tiny bit of concrete underneath them to hold them up. But the idea is that you are standing on the earth connected to the land. Uh, and then when you play them, they reverberate at a rate that, I mean, that we can hear, we can each hear, right? So you can play music for each other, um, but they also reverberate uh, below human hearing. And so the sort of premise of these drums was to make something that when you play music on them, you're making music for each other and you're also making music for the land. And <clears throat> to sort of further, um, solidify or reinforce that idea. Um, one of the people in the photograph is um, Bradley Dick. And he is, 
uh, a treasure here in Victoria. Um, and he does so much for, for so many people in teaching us about Lakwangan territory. And I asked him to write a song. And so during the opening of, of those drums, we had uh, him, he and the others sang the song and we gifted the song to the drums. So now the drums have their own song. And it sort of relates to this, this idea of things other than human having agency. Um, and so the drums, if they have their own song, then they have agency. And if we play music for the earth, <clears throat> then we're transforming our relationship with it. I know it's a small gesture, but if we can start to think about things differently, then, then maybe that can be the step towards caring for them differently too. I think um, you have been thinking about things differently and, and just an example of that is the relationship now between the witness blanket, your, your huge installation piece made up of more than 600 objects from residential schools, government documents, church documents. Uh, it's now at the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. And there's a very lovely and kind of living contract between the witness blanket and the museum. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, so when, when we started looking for a permanent home for the blanket, the museum came up as a possibility and partly because when it was there, uh, I had a very good interaction with them. Uh, partly because I think that, that, this issue needs to be placed amongst the large um, global atrocities, amongst the, the other genocides uh, that the museum features, um, and partly because they had expressed interest. And so I, I sat down with them and we came up with the idea of, of, of making an agreement in a different way. And so what I sort of floated as a possibility was for us to think about it, not so much as a contract, but as a stewardship agreement, which is what we've sort of come to call, call it. But what it does is it identifies our, our, each of our responsibilities to each other and to the blanket. And it places all of the rights associated with the contract or with the agreement with the blanket, thereby giving it agency. And the last piece of that was that, of course, we have a written, uh, a written agreement, but we then put it into, we enacted it through traditional ceremony in a big house, where we called witnesses to expand the envelope of community who are responsible for the blanket. So it, it's not a sale There's the of yeah. a work. Um, and you can see the box that that John Young is carrying there, and that that is that holds the contract. It holds the agreement. It holds all of the feelings and words that were brought up um, at that at that ceremony. And I, I happen to still have it here at my house because um, mm. because of the pandemic, we haven't been able to send it to the museum. So <laughs> I've been getting to spend a little bit of extra time with it. Uh, but overall, that agreement really is about is about trying to to transform relationship and do things in a different way. And, um, and having a crown corporation, uh, think of, of an object or agree to think of an object, um, in being the witness blanket as having rights of its own, as having agency brings a little bit of the Kwakwakiwak teachings that, that I grew up with into an agreement. And it, it hopefully, uh, it transforms the way that that the piece is managed in the future. When when I'm no longer around, and when the people who were part of making this agreement with me are no longer around to to be the ones making the decisions. Speaking of transformation, I would imagine you're having to think very differently about how you will be teaching. Uh, you, you are hands-on, you're with students in, in studios. What are you thinking about uh, as we begin to think about next semester at UVic? 
oh, we just had a very big meeting about that in our department. Um, and we talked about all of the different angles and factors, um, trying to base our, our decision making in, you know, being safe um, and, and sort of focusing on the safety of each other and, our, and of our students, uh, but also trying to figure out ways to to make sure that the tactile hands on part of art banking isn't lost. Um, and so that's kind of where we've focused our conversation is there's there are things that I can do online. I can have uh, face to face visits with students where we talk about their particular projects and their concepts and work through them. And I can do that in a in a medium like like we're doing right now. Um, but when it comes to to assessing the work they're doing and looking at the process they're using and the marks they're making, we we need to to find a way to to still have some form of of material. Otherwise, it becomes these small windows that don't show mm -hmm. the dynamic angles, that don't bring in the smells and the sounds and the texture of of art. Uh, and so depending on how things go over this next um, few months, as we open things back up and we're allowed to see more people and, and go more places, um, I think it's going to have a big impact on, on how things go in the fall um, when, when I go back to teaching. But I'm hopeful that, that we can find a way to reduce the number of people in a space um, and maybe change the way they get access to equipment and studio space, but still um, still find a way to have that, that hands-on experience for people, particularly um, students who need, need time in studio, need time uh, to work with material to, to develop their, their artistic practice. I, I want to ask you this question, I, I guess both uh, professionally and personally. What are you looking forward to most as restrictions do lift? Hmm. I think um, from, from a professional perspective, I've got a whole bunch of projects that are kind of in limbo at the moment. Um, and so I'm looking forward to getting to getting back to them. And so much of my work is is about engaging in, with community, and it's definitely much more difficult to do that through these means because not everybody has the same access to technology. Uh, not everybody understands how it works. And when when I want to sit and talk with elders, I want to sit in the same space with them. Um, but I completely recognize that I can't do that right now because I would never want to put them at any uh, undue risk. So there's that part of it, the, the getting back to community in, in, a, in a person to person way um, and reanimating some of those projects that are kind of on hold. Um, but personally, I think it's, it's the connection with friends, right? Like it's, It's getting to go. To see my dad, to see my mom. To visit um, Elaine's family in Vancouver. And these are all things that we've done in different ways via video. Uh, but you never want to miss out on um, on time with people and so that's what i that's what i look forward to is is being able to see um and embrace those who i love it's beautiful we i know we have a picture of you and uh and your dad from last year's orange shirt day ceremony uh at the university yeah there he is um, so, so much uh, a teacher and an inspiration for you, Carrie, and uh, 
when you, when you're speaking to him next virtually and and your mom too um please make sure you give them my love okay i will for sure and also miss addy and i i read about and elaine too i mean i i i love your family very much your 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 whole extended family um i did read about how you were trying to tell her uh, Miss Addie, that um, you had a bag of chocolates and they were filled with peanut butter and you said they were for the birds and she wasn't entirely sure about that. <laughs> so was, you know what I miss? Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say she was she was angling for uh, for an almond chocolate cup and I tried to convince her that we bought it for the birds. <laughs> She would not believe me, and um, she went and did research on the internet, to, and she brought it to me, printed out, and pointed to it, and she goes, aha. And I know, you know that I'm not lying, because I don't even know what this word means, because chocolate is poison to birds. So she, she debunked my, my joke, and I had to give her a piece of chocolate. You know, these are the teachers we really learn from, right? <laughs> Carrie, thank totally. you so much. Uh, Gayla Kasla again for, for another conversation. And uh, I really look forward to seeing you face to face so I can do one of these without the air in between. Well, when you say, what do you miss most? Um, I, I miss hugs and I look forward to next time I'm allowed to give you a hug. Big ditto. Thanks for this. Gela Kasla. Bye, Sheila. Bye, Carrie. And thank you very much for tuning in once again. Um, this really should be called Great Company, I think. <laughs> I'll see if I can get it changed. I'm Sheila Rogers. Thanks for joining us. Be well and stay safe. Mm -hmm.